All right, welcome back. And now we have an interview with actor Paul Cram, who's going to tell us all about the two shorts that we just saw and various other things related to student films. So, Paul, tell us what Somnium was about, because I have no idea. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, Somnium, um, for, for people that don't know, is actually the Latin word for dream. And uh, for, so basically the meaning of the film can mean different things for different people, but for myself um, and what I really responded to from watching it later on um, is that, I, I don't know if you've had dreams like this, where if you could just get into a room faster or if you could just get around the corner quick enough that you would you know, find what you're looking for, that you'd get reconnected with that person that you've lost. Oh. So hopefully that enlightens it a little bit. Yeah, um, so uh, to my way of thinking while watching the film, it kept seeming like the wife was dead and that your character, Henry, was like... You're very smart. <laughs> <laughs> obsessed with trying to find her. So had she drowned in, in a bathtub? Was that, was that why there was the constant water imagery? You know, there wasn't ever... Um, I mean, this project was interesting because the director, Phil... Phil Jonkis, I had worked with him on a couple of projects before this one. So um, he came to me and he's like doing, this was his thesis project. Oh, okay. And he w showed me the script, which wasn't very fleshed out. And he and I kind of talked back and forth about kind of where he wanted to go with it. Um, so that might be one of the reasons why it's not super clear in the film what's going on is because of that approach of, of I mean, we went to various locations and he was like, you know, we, we would talk about where my character was at and what we're doing. But uh, it was always, it was kind of more of an experiment um, along those lines of that dream state of, of seeking somebody. Um, so it was really loosely based on losing Sarah. Um, he kind of wanted to leave it open-ended. I think it's very open-ended. Um, just did she die, didn't she die? Uh, a little bit of that has to be up to you. Yeah, as I, as I was watching it, I kept questioning, is she dead or is he dead? Are they both dead? Is all this a dream? Yeah. Uh, is it a dream about someone who's dead? Uh, there, there were lots of, it, it was one of those things where there were more questions than answers mm -hmm. kind of thing, and I, I guess that's what he was going for, mm -hmm. you know, to make a, 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 a film that doesn't hand you everything, which is something that student films can do because they don't have to answer to anybody. Right. Whereas a Hollywood right. film, no, we gotta dumb it down, we gotta tell people what they wanna hear. Yes, force thing. feed them. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Which yes. actually, I mean, it has its place, it definitely. You know, a, a really linear storyline, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which this one this one doesn't have. I mean, compared to Going to Seed, which has a very linear storyline. Great segue. <laughs> Moving on to Going to Seed. Um, the first thing that I thought when I was watching it uh, about most of the way through was, where are they shooting now? And sure enough, in the credits, <laughs> you filmed in St. Paul, Minneapolis, and then you ran all the way up to Duluth we to did. film at a beach. Yes, yes. <laughs> Were none of the beaches at the lakes around here good enough? <laughs> um, I, <laughs> the, again, the director, Bree, um, she had a really, actually, from the, from the get-go, uh, which is kind of nice, because you know, with Phil's, it was, it was such an open-ended kind of a, uh, an idea. Um, with Breeze, she had a very, very clear idea of what she wanted to present, and the visuals were all very clear in her mind of where she wanted to take things. Oh, okay. So, so going, that beach was the only one that was right. Going up to the beach and go and filming in St. Paul at these various locations, I mean, she just really had a clear vision of what visually she wanted to show. Um, I love the I love the poem, by the way. So, and the poem is so rich for for people that know the poem, you know, and love it. It's so rich with imagery. I think that was why she chose Duluth and and St. Paul and the various the really scenic locations. Um, I actually think it's it, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that they're kind of surprised that it's Duluth um, because it looks so. Uh, maybe we are by the ocean. Who knows? Um, sands the waves, but mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. been there's been interesting feedback from people just about um, the imagery. So uh, you are one of the few, if not the only. <laughs> uh, actor that I know who actually has the students you work with sign a contract with you. I do. So tell us about that. I do, I do. Over the course of my career, if you would, um, <laughs> I've done about 50 student films. So, and I've only received, you know, a handful of copies. So I, I you know, all of that time that, you know, you invest as a, as a performer, it's like, well, 
I don't have anything to show for this. So uh, what I've done is I've, I've just taken the approach of, you know, I, I have to sign contracts whenever I'm working on a commercial or if I'm working on a feature project, you know, in LA or here in Minneapolis. Um, why not do that for students? It's a good thing for them to learn. It's a good thing for me to learn. Thanks so much for coming and chatting with us. Yeah. It's been very Thanks for having informative me. It's and very fun. Very and, fun. And uh, I wish you well in your future endeavors. Thanks. You too.